It was a primary school. We we had a BBC micro and we had uh, Granny's Garden on it. And it was like the best thing in the world if you had got to go and play on Granny's Garden. So uh, that was my first experience of it was uh, playing, but not knowing that it was actually teaching me things like binary counting and so on. Luckily, my parents were primary teachers, so they used to be the school one home during the holidays. And I used to get those magazines where they had all the programmes in. And you sit there typing all the programs out. And the first one I think I did was like a, a one with uh, skyscrapers and you typed it all in and the, the heights changed. And, and I thought this was amazing. We saved it to a tape. I still remember things that I did on the micro now. And this is probably 40 years on. So <laughs> nearly 40 years on. Yeah. So um I remember learning binary by doing a, a coding puzzle, which was about turning lamps on and off. Um, and that's how I learned it. And now I've written things to do with uh, NASA space launches that involve binary. Um, and I've published an educational resource on that that's been downloaded thousands of times across the world. So it's definitely had a knock-on effect. did a version of breakout once and that was great and I spent hours and hours just mindlessly bouncing a ball off some bricks it was the most therapeutic thing ever I think it's like one of those um pointless games it's, it just goes on and on and on there's just always more bricks to bounce the ball at um but it was very satisfying I think it would have been a weekend a weekend project so I would have spent all weekend sat there. So it would have been something that I'd I'd always start with something out in the magazine and then work out which bits did which and then work out how I could change them to do different things. So you could change the colour of the blocks, for example, um, change the size of the blocks. Um, so it was just like little tweaks that got me into programming. And now, even now, I'd kind of reverse engineer things. So I'll find something similar that somebody's done and look at how they did it and then go, oh, so that's how we do this. So I think, yeah, fun weekends weren't wasted. I think it was the, the way that you could create stuff yourself. So you could make the computer say hello back at you. And this was like... The most amazing thing ever is I did something and the computer did what I told it to. Um, so that kind of sense of wonder I took forwards into what I do now, which is I, I teach graphics students to use um, like technology in creative ways. So they don't necessarily have the computing background that I have. So I teach them the computing stuff and they're like, I can touch this thing and then these lights come on or I can I can make music trigger when people walk into a room and they find this like um they find that quite fascinating. Um and it's nice to see that sense of wonder appear in other people too. I only really learned to to program properly, um, probably in my late 30s. So I think there was a lot of inherent knowledge that I got from playing with BASIC and, and things like that. I did a bit of Fortran at university, but um, I think that the kind of basis that I had of that computational thinking from using the BBC Micro was, was what made me a success in what I do now. It suited me so well that it was just this sort of logical object that you could kind of um, use in a very consistent way. Um, and then you could start being creative with it. So I think if I hadn't had access to to it, then, um, then yeah, I, I don't think I would have gone well. I went, I think I would have just gone into sort of something artistic or creative. Um, but now I get to combine both of them.